we're going to take a look at my favourite image editing software, Breeze Browser. I've been using Breeze Browser ever since I swapped over from film to digital. I knew that I got to develop a digital workflow that would allow me to cope with the vast numbers of pictures we tend to take with digital cameras, and Breeze Browser has been the backbone of that workflow ever since. It's a very simple, intuitive bit of software to use, there's very little learning curve to it. It presents your pictures extremely well. Even raw files look very punchy and sharp. There's an unsharp mass filter on the pictures which really makes them look good. It's a bargain price, but most of all it is extremely fast for editing. Deciding whether you're going to keep a picture or delete it, this is the software to use. First of all there's three layout modes, these icons at the top represent that, you can see they're fairly obvious as to what they do, you've got a series of thumbnails, thumbnails with one large picture, so the thumbnails on the left, or the third one is just one large picture. I don't tend to use the middle one, I tend to use just thumbnails and a large picture. You also can get to that larger size just by clicking on any picture and we're straight to it. You can go forwards and backwards using these red arrows, but I normally use the keyboard and the arrow keys on that for going forwards and backwards. If we go back to the thumbnails, there's a tick button, so whichever picture you've got selected at the moment, if I hit this blue button up on the top left, the picture is now selected, and we can pick on that one and select that. But as well as using the tick box at the top, you can use the spacebar, which again is what I would normally do, and if I hit the spacebar again it unticks it, so it toggles it on and off. If we now go down to some pictures that haven't been edited, I'm picking on this folder down here, Scotland. Notice that I've got day one, day two, day three, etc. subfolders. So every day I'm downloading the pictures to, to a different folder. So if we pick on day one, first of all the thumbnails are loaded very, very quickly. Down in the bottom right hand corner here, there are 824 pictures in this folder, but straight away the thumbnails are there. What I normally do when I'm editing is just go to a full size picture and decide whether I want to delete or keep. So if I now hit the delete button, I get this message confirming I want to delete it, which means I've got to hit the button yet again, which is very much slowing me down. So that's something you want to switch off. It comes on as default, but if we go to File, Preferences, you've got six headings, but this is one of the nice things about Breeze Browser. All of your settings and options are here in this one box. You don't have to go hunting very far. So under the general heading we've got confirm before deleting images, well untick that, you do not want to keep confirming. And what we'll do is we'll select move deleted images to deleted subdirectory, that's what we want, OK that. Now when I delete a picture it just deletes it. Now I'm going forwards, I'm using the arrow keys to go forwards and you're going through very very fast and now I'm, I'm deleting equally fast. What happens if I make a mistake because I'm not confirming? Well, go back to your thumbnails, come back down to Scotland. Underneath the day one folder, we've now got a deleted folder. It was automatically created. All the images we deleted have been put into there. And if we've made a mistake, we can take that picture and drag it back and put it back into day one. So you haven't actually lost the picture by deleting it, simply moved it into a subfolder I'm going to move all of these back so we haven't lost anything. After I've gone through the initial edit and got rid of all the rubbish, you leave yourselves with lots of similar pictures like these red grouse. So then you want to start comparing them. So what you can do is highlight four pictures, Control Z on the keyboard brings up all four pictures at 100% so you can check the focus. You can decide if one picture is better than the other. Actually none of these are very good, but let's say we wanted to keep the fourth one down here. We hit the escape button, unselect the fourth one, and when I hit the delete button, these three will disappear. You're not restricted to four pictures, we can do lots of pictures. 100 pictures if you want, Control Z, they all come up. Now I hit the page down button and I go to the next four and the next four. 
and I quite often do that I might select 40 pictures and go through looking for the one that appears to be the sharpest. You can zoom out with the F8 button on the keyboard and you can zoom back in with the F9 button. But it starts off at 100% which is perfect for checking the focus. You can do battery name which is another thing I tend to do as I'm editing. It helps me to group the pictures together. You can sort the pictures into various orders, image order, sort alphabetically. So if I click on alphabetically and then let's say I'm going to batch rename these four pictures here, I highlight them, right click, batch rename. Now there are lots of bits of software out there for batch renaming. I just always like the, what, the way that Bees Browser works. Uh, red Grouse was already typed in but normally I would have to type in Red Grouse. I then got the letter L which represents this year. When we get to the 1st of January 2021 I will change that to the letter M. So it's just a way of keeping a track on which picture was taken in which year at, at a quick glance. Then it's percentage sign and N. And it tells you here what these special characters do. And I've kept this as custom style 1 and um, this is what it's going to batch rename it as. This is the name as in the camera and it has changed it to Red Grouse L0121 and just keeps incrementing the numbers. So other than typing the species name here I don't change anything and it just keeps adding a number. So if I hit rename it's renaming those four but it's also put them into alphabetical order so they're down the bottom. I use it for my file management as well. If I wanted to move those four pictures somewhere, I now right click and I can either move to a folder or copy to a folder. So if I select copy, it's asking me which folder I want to put those pictures into. And I find that again a very convenient way of moving my pictures about. So Breeze Browser is my editing software, it's my battery naming, it's also my file management for pictures to move them around. Another feature it has, if we bring up a large picture, is a magnifying tool. So here, view magnifier. If I place the magnifier on the bird's head, I can see that it's, it's not sharp. And that's not very sharp either. So the magnifying tool, that can be quite useful. The main attribute of Breeze Browser is the speed of editing. When I'm away on a foreign trip for two or three weeks, by the time I get home, I've usually done most of the editing, all the battery naming, even entered the IPTC data, which you can also do. I can be doing this every night of the trip, but also on the flight back home and sitting in the airport. It saves me an awful lot of time when I get home.